So when I started my YouTube channel, I told y'all it was going to be a mixture of everything I do. So you've seen a lot of horses, you've seen a little bit of hunting and fishing, and now it's time to introduce you to my cows. So I did a video not too long ago, a couple months ago, of us preg checking them, seeing who all was pregnant. And all of my cows are pregnant, um, which means calving season is not that far away. We're in May right now, so we got June, July, August. We got about three and a half months before we got little baby calves popping up every day. So that's gonna be really, really fun. But I figured you would need to get acquainted with these mamas before we get really invested in their calving season and on baby watch and stuff like that. So let's go meet them. Let's meet my weanlings first. So all of these do not belong to me. Only three of them do. I have a few cows that are my own. The rest belong to my parents. So let's introduce you to the ones that belong to me. Okay, so this one right here, this lovely lady with the tornado on her face, that's KG. Um, excuse me, there she is. So that stands for Kylie Grace because when she was born, she created a lot of drama. We couldn't find her for the first two days she was born. We like saw her in the distance and we we're like, okay, there's, you know, Greta had her baby. Let's go tag her. And then when we went to go tag her, we couldn't find her. We had just had one baby get, you know, eaten by a coyote, which hadn't happened in years. So we were like, oh crap. Like she probably got eaten by a coyote. We looked for that thing for forever. Six people, multiple four wheelers going through the woods, trying to find her, couldn't find her. So that night, um, my husband and our friend Kyle who works here on the farm, went coyote hunting and happened upon Greta and KG. So I had told Kyle earlier that day, I said, if you find my dang baby, I'll name her after you. So ergo, Kylie Grace, KG. Um, and then this one right here, this is like my prized possession of my cows right now. Probably the best cow I've, or I mean, she's a weanling, best heifer I've ever bred. Um, her confirmation, I mean, she's just amazing. Other than like, two bull calves she was the highest uh, weaning weight out of like this whole bunch um, just honestly like I couldn't believe how good she came out so she is uh, the third baby of my first ever cow Leona so that's Winona she left but let me see that's KG that's Winona and then as you can see I have a thing for red cows. They're like the only two red cows in here. And that's because I like to be able to look out in the sea of black cows and see which ones are mine. Well, Fiona, which is Winona's big sister, had her first calf this year. And there was a chance of it being, um, actually no, just kidding. So Winona's big sister Fiona had her first calf this past year and he's in here. And she was bred by our cleanup bull who was a really nice bull, but he was homozygous black. So this little guy, let's see, I think he's down here. Where are you at, Kevin? This, it, right here. This little guy right here is Kevin. Um, it's a K year. Don't pay attention to Winona. I don't follow the rules all the time. But this is Kevin. He does not necessarily have the goods to be a herd bull. So he is going to be a steer and be used for meat. So let's just not think about it. He's not gonna be used for me while he's a little baby. He'll be older, you know, that kind of thing. And that's, they're beef cows, that's what they're here for. But uh, I just don't wanna think about Kevin being dinner. Let's just go look over here real quick because I do have a heifer named Gemma who's black and she's solid black. So I can't tell if, she, I have to go look at her ear tag number. Um, and there's a couple heifers in here. I don't think she is. I was about to say, I think those are the ones that calved late. Yeah, she's not in there. So let's go hop on the Can-Am, go drive to the back of the farm. Dad said this morning when he looked, they were like at the very back. So we may have to do a little looking and then we're probably gonna see Rooster while we're out there too. And if you don't know who Rooster is, you're in for a treat. I love this hill with all the gildings on it. So majestic. <laughs> is that, that's J26. I'm looking for J306. I'm looking for J306. That's not you. 
Oh, there's a bunch in here. Look at them. Oh, rooster. We found the cow jackpot. Why don't we just, well, I'm just going to pull right here and we'll, we'll park and get out and look for them. All right, let's see if we can't find. I don't see my red ones. I think I saw a glimpse of a red one over there. But I'm looking for Gemma just to get that one out of the way because I can't spot see her. The one I'm trying to find first is my only black one, which is Gemma. And these cows are scattered. And uh, there's even a, some up there. Good Lord. They're all kind of moving that way. There's some... Okay, let me just go ahead and say... Uh, this sounds heartless. There's not really a whole lot of reason to get invested in Gemma. Because she's going to be in our annual sale this year since she's black and I'm a red cow girl. So her due date isn't until November. So our, you know, she's gonna be sold before she even calves. So I'm gonna try to find her, but if I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Who are you? You look kind of heifery. You look kind of young. That would be great if you were Gemma. J, no, J530. Mm. I need some dang binoculars. There's got to be some in this thing. My husband doesn't go anywhere without binoculars. Oh, there they are. Now, I use Burris binoculars, but for the sake of this video, I'll just grab these in their vortex. All right. Let me see if I can't see your numbers. No, no, no. That J5G, that's Angel. Now she and, that was like a whole thing too. This one with the white face, like the white crown on her head. That was a whole thing. Cause she was being a heifer, no pun intended, and wouldn't come up with the rest of the heifers. So we had just let her out there with our cleanup bowl that was a yearling, so they had like a little first love because he had never been with a heifer either. They kind of figured it out together. So I did a whole series on that, and that was interesting. So she is pregnant by Jawbreaker, but so is my heifer Gemma. So a couple baby mamas for Jawbreaker this year. Let's just walk through here, I guess. If y'all see a J306 and I just don't see her, then that's Gemma. What is she doing? Getting in that swampy crap? Now, she's too big to be Gemma. That's a full-grown woman. Gemma's a little girl. She's a heifer. She ain't never had a baby. They're all, okay. We're going to be hiking. We'll go for a little ride. What are you doing up in those sticks? Why, do you, why don't y'all just like being in the freaking grass? Why do you get in the weirdest worst places there's my girls i see a couple red ones i see bonnie i think i'm gonna go up here and try to just like stay from a distance for a second to find Gemma, and then we can i might just be able to do a little drive by introduce everybody there's my girls and rooster Okay, so this, this little roan drink of water right here is Bonnie. So I purchased Bonnie at our last annual sale because we have a sale with two other farms and we are the Seed Stock Alliance. So, and then there were some other outside entries as well that brought like three and four cows each, but like there was three main farms and we hosted it at our farm this past year. This year it won't be at our farm, but it will be the next year. And, uh, one of our partner farms had Bonnie in the sale and she was like the only roan cow there and she was just so pretty. And, and so even against my, um, my dad's like, you've already got red cows. Why do we got to get a roan one? I'm like, cause I want her. I want her bad. So, um, I set a limit for how much I could bid for her. And then I, I went way past that, but I got her. So right here we got two of mine. So this right here is Leona who is Fiona and Winona's mama. She's my first cow that I ever bought. And then next to her is one that I bought last year, Bonnie, who is my blue roan cow. Um, 
she is bred to a red cow this year. She's gonna have a red bull calf. She is bred to Justice, our bull. So she's gonna have a black bull calf or roan bull calf. We will have to see. So Leona, this red big headed thing right here is my first cow ever. And now, you know, she's got that big, she's seven eighths Fleck V, which is like a super pure red Simmental breed. I should say that all these cows are Simmental, purebred Simmental. So she comes from um, a, a, a older bloodline. And so she's got that big old Fleck V head. And while some people don't like that, her babies, chef's kiss, all gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, I'm talking about to you. So she's bred to uh, Hilger One. Hilger One is KG's sire, so um, the weanling that I showed y'all earlier. So both her and her daughter, Fiona, are bred to Hilger One this year. And then Bonnie, my blue roan cow, is bred to Justice, who is our herd bull. And then I think also Greta, my other red cow, who is, yeah, she's right here. This is Greta. She's also bred to Justice. Still looking for Miss Gemma. Let me see if I can get her, put her head up. She's got a cute little marking on her face. Greta is the mother of Gemma and Kylie Grace. Greta, all this tall hay, making it hard to see y'all. Are you with your baby? Is, that would be so cute. Is that, is that Gemma? No, she's got a white face, it's not her. And then this is my girl Greta. Her babies are Kylie Grace and Gemma. And she is bred to Justice this year, our bull. And she has a bull calf in her. I think Greta may also be in our sale this year due to the fact that she's carrying a bull and I like to keep heifers and I just have too many. So I don't know. I haven't made a decision on that yet. So don't hold me to it. Rooster, you look too fuzzy, buddy. It's getting hot. It's about summer, buddy. You got a shed. He's also like 29 years old, so uh, I have a feeling, you know, one of these years I'm gonna have to start body clipping him. As they get older, sometimes they like stop shedding properly and whatnot. Hi, sweetie. Are you gonna be feral today? Sometimes he's feral, sometimes he's not. Sometimes he like lets me pet him. Sometimes he acts like he hates me. It just depends on the day. Hi, darling. Hi, sweet boy. We had a dude pull up like I don't know, when I was 11 or 12, and he pulled up in the barn, and no one was supervising me. I was in the barn by myself, and I was like, hi, this random dude, and he was like, hey, um, do you want a donkey? Because I got this donkey, and he keeps getting out, and uh, he needs friends, and he needs to be with somebody, and I was like, yeah, we want a donkey, so he went and got a trailer and brought over a rooster, and we put him with the cows, and that was history. Yeah, buddy. Are you being sweet today? You're being sweet today. You're being so sweet. I love his little, his little loose lip. He's so squishy. He's like, woman, this is why I'm feral half the time, because you do this crap to me when I let you touch me. <sighs> Let's find Fiona. There's the big guy, right there. So that's Mr. Justice. That is our bull who is both our herd bull and we stand him to the public. So that means um, a few times a year, we send him to a facility that collects him and freezes doses um, called straws of his semen. And then just like with the horses, how I order um, semen from other stallions to AI my mares, people do that with bulls. So, and we do that with bulls as well, because sometimes even if you have a really good herd bull, um, genetically, that might just not be the best pairing for some of your cows. So same thing with us. There's a few cows of ours that we just let him breed because he's a really good pairing for. And then there's a few that we um, AI first before we let him clean up. Clean up. Let's hop on the side by side because this is all super tall and I just know we're going to get ticks. And also, I've had a fever for the last however long and I'm about to fall over. Let's talk about Justice here for a second. He is a very good example of both a numbers bull and 
a form to function bull. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So with any registered cattle, um, they have EPDs. So EPDs are expected progeny differences, um, which basically it helps make predictions of the genetic ability and helps make selections for breeding decisions for like desirable traits. So, you know, based on one cow's EPDs, you can match them to another cow that has uh, traits that could either help their weaknesses. Um, and so with Justice, his EPDs are just like unbelievable. So I'll tell you his API, for those that know what an API is, and honestly, I have a hard time even explaining what it is. I just know like what, what a good API versus a bad API is, but his API, is $196.20, uh, which is in the top 1% of the entire breed of Simmental. Um, so pretty much, like, like his numbers are incredible, but on top of that, his phenotype, which is like the same thing as like saying a horse's conformation, how he's built, his feet, his soundness is incredible, which if you have a bull with good numbers, but he's built horribly and, you know, not sound, then that's not going to do you any good. So his terminal index, which is basically the percentage for building beef. So if you were to um, breed him to a commercial herd for steers to have the most beef on like per cow when you're selling to get the most bang for your buck, he is in the top 1% of that. He is in the top 1% for marbling, for docility, the top 25% for ribeye area, the top 3% for average daily gain, meaning the daily weight gain of the calves, um, top 10% for yearling weight, and top 10% for calving ease, meaning his babies come out small, which is easy for the moms to birth, and then they grow big after that, which is what you want, because then that increases the rate of um, you know cows that live past calving, because that's a whole big issue with calving, is that if you breed to a big bull to get those big numbers, a lot of the times that means big baby, and a lot of the times that means a difficult birth, which sometimes ends in tragedy. So you don't want that. Also, I want to mention that if you do want to buy some semen from Justice, you can. Um, he's on the Allied Genetics website, and I'll link that below in the description. You know, you can see how much per straw he is. You can see the rest of his EPDs. You can see confirmation picks, all that stuff. So. If you're interested in breeding to my boy, I would love to see pictures of your calves. And um, I mean, he's all, he's amazing. So it would not it would not be a bad choice. Let me see if we can't go find Fiona. That's the last one because she she's a bit darker red than the rest of them. What was that Gemma? I would love if Gemma's over here. That's the thing is, this is so high, there's no way I could see. There's Fiona. Okay, so you see that pretty red girl right there. That is my first calf ever. So she is Leona's first baby. I do want to breed her in the future to Winona's sire, just because I feel like that genetic pairing was like amazing with Leona. I will 100% be breeding back to him with Leona. You can just barely see her cute little blaze, but she will not pick that head up for me to show you. Woman! doesn't care. <laughs> well, y'all are just going to have to take my, <coughs> my word for it that I've got a black cow named Gemma. But next time we bring him through the chute, I'll show you. And like I said, you're not going to see her baby anyway, so. Which is kind of sad because she's having a jawbreaker baby, which is our young bull. That's Gemma, right there. Hold on. So she's not this one, but the one right behind her. J I thought it was J306, but it is. It's J06G, because Greta is G G306, so they put it like that. She's got her head down right now. Well, I didn't do nothing. So for a recap, okay, we've got Winona which is a baby from last year, KG from last year, Kevin from last year, and then we have Gemma as a heifer, so she's having her first baby, and then all my cows are Leona, Greta, Fiona, and Bonnie. And this year, we're selling Gemma, 
possibly selling Greta. Haven't made up my mind because I really want to go to a purebred Fleck V sale and get a really nice heifer or two to possibly do embryos with and whatnot and get into um, like the next step up of quality of purebred red Simmentals. So it's it's a whole different ball game with cows. Like red ones, so here's what's happened with, a lot of people ask like, why do people not like red cows? And it's not because you can't have a nice red cow. It's because a lot of people get hung up on the numbers. And that's what I said earlier. Like, you know, a cow can have really good numbers and then you look at it and it's like got bad conformation and unsound and all that good stuff. Well, people got really hung up on black Angus and black Simmental and they started working really hard on those bloodlines of improving those EPDs. The red cows are improving, but because people went so hard on the black cows, that means the red cows, they just didn't spend the time improving those numbers like they did the black ones. So they're a little behind on numbers, which is why it's really hard to find a red cow that has really good numbers. And it's all relative to what you think good numbers are and whatnot, but I really enjoy having my red cows. I like to be able to see which ones are mine. I think, you know, you can get just as high quality as a red cow. It just may not have the numbers to show it. But if we're gonna get them better, you know, we gotta start putting some time and effort into um, improving those genetics. And I'm all about, in anything that I breed, improving genetics and improving a breed. So that's why I really, really want to go try to find, you know, one or two purebred Fleck V Simmental heifers and maybe, you know, do some embryos, put them in the cows that I already have, that kind of thing. That's kind of my personal goals. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be this year or next year that I go buy one. Um, I, I'm not sure who I'm selling this year, you know, other than Gemma. I Usually I come up with a plan and then whatever ends up happening ends up being way better than what I planned. So we'll just have to see about that. But I figured before calving season, it would be great to introduce you to my cows, tell you, you know, who they're bred to. And they're all due between September and October. The ones that I'm keeping, Gemma's due in November, but she will be sold before then. So we're going to have a busy September and October. I think some of my dad's cows are even due in August. I help him a lot with that. So we're gonna have calves from August through December, which will be just really fun um, leading up to foaling season. And we're getting our baby fix when the babies are older, the foals are older. So hope you all enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any questions. And when it comes to the cows, I'm still learning. I do not know about cows nearly as much as I know about horses. I enjoy increasing my knowledge on the topic. I enjoy having goals with my breeding program and I enjoy learning from my dad and all the people that you know he works with and things like that so if you all have any knowledge that you want to share in the comments I would love to hear it if you have any questions I would love to um, answer or if I don't have the answer find the answer for you maybe make some videos about that so if you could just give me some insight of what you would like to see about the cows and this side of the farm I would love to see that in the comments and if you could like and subscribe as well that helps me so much and i look forward to seeing you in the next video